my situation situated. So I, that's the best situation I can do. That's fine because you guys can see anyways, but I can't. So I need to log into this. and see what y'all are talking about. See if we can get rid of some of that glare. Now it's a little dark. Nope, just turn the light on. So let me know if you guys can hear me okay. So sorry, it's been forever since the last time we have been live. I'm working on a big project. Sandy! Hello everyone. Hey, 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 hey. So glad to see you guys. Okay, let's get started. So this is a zip piece that Jeff did forever ago. So forever ago. And it has turned. This was essentially translucent resin and um the yellow definitely peaked all the way through so for this ugh, for this live i'm going to show you guys what i do to um fix it hide it mend it repair it improve it for um i guess a future hopefully sale. Now, I'm using colors today that I've never used before. I'm using the Just Resin Spearmint, which is one of my new favorite colors because it's a super yummy. So I'm trying this. Mm, glare Gitter Rid of Her. And I feel like it's just dulling my colors right now. So I'm going to put this back up for a moment. Because I don't think it's doing me any favors. And we're not working on a black resin surface, so I'm not really that concerned. Back to the yummy. It's like Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's a little bit more pastel-y because it's got a little pearlescent in it. Love it. It's one of my new favorite colors. This is what it looks like mixed into resin. What's up? What's up, everyone? Thank you guys for coming in and seeing what we're up to today. I'm Erica. Jeff is out cutting clear stuff. And Bowie is observing and Canvas is, I hope, she's napping. So the next color I'm going to be using is Dark and Stormy from Color Passion. You can kind of see it up here where I've kind of raked it along this edge, what kind of color it's going to be. It's like a moody turquoise. And the next color I'm going to use, I've never used before either. It is Warm Taupe, which is, it's kind of a grayish. It's a pinky gray beige color. It is from Color Obsession. I'm so not sure about putting these colors together, but we're going to, we're going to live it together. I also mixed up some beautiful abalone from resin art. You can find all these colors on my website, artisttilldeath.com. Look at that beautiful sparkle. I did not overload it. So when I'm picking my stir stick, which you can also get on our website, out of the resin, you can't really see it. But then when it hits the light, you can fully see the beautiful glitter and sparkle. I also mixed up a translucent white with the Passion Top Cell from Color Passion, so you can see through it. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming in. I love to see where you guys are watching from. And then I use my Just Resin Titanium for my opaque white. 
Looks like it may not be that opaque, but I think it'll be fine. I also have to mix up my Interference Oyster. This is also from Resin Art. That should be good. I'm so not used to mixing powders anymore because I use so many just pastes. Pastes are my jam. I don't have to worry about these little chunks of mica mixing in. If you haven't ordered from Erica and Artist Till Death, you need to do it. She hooks you up. Well, thank you so much for that shout out. Miss Paula, it means more than the world to me to have EL support. So this is a little bit translucent. You can see the color of the stir stick where the resin is breaking. So I'm gonna mix just a little bit more in there because I wanna have more of an opaque look. Um, I The most color that I mixed up was my translucent white. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the warmth from this ambered resin coming through. If you don't know why resin ambers, um, there's a million videos out there. Essentially for this one, the reason was there was no pigment and all resins will amber eventually. And so this is very old and so it is very ambered. Ambering and yellowing are not the same thing. Yellowing is usually operator error, whereas ambering is a product situation. I do ship out of the country. I ship internationally every day, um, except for Sundays, because post office doesn't want to work on Sundays, which is fine. Um, everything except for resin, because most countries that I'm trying to import into uh, don't want to let me import. Oh, oh. That's the other color I need to mix up. So yeah, they don't want to let me import it, so it's fine, it's whatever. The last color I'm mixing up is Color Obsession Rich Gold Shimmer. It doesn't look like the most brilliant color sitting in this jar right now, but after I get it mixed up and you guys see the amazing reactions that it has, you are going to want some too. And I happen to currently have a pretty good stock of all of these colors that I'm using today. It's a little bit of a, like, um, maybe an antique gold, rustic gold, rich gold. It's not quite as vibrant as the bright gold that I use a lot or the 007. Look, it's just molten goodness. So let's put some in resin. Look, even on its own, it's just sticking together and floating. Well, some of it sank. But all the shiny bits floated, which is one reason why I really like this pigment. Because I like some of my pigment to sink and some of it to float. And this, this resin color almost has like um, an oil slick effect. I don't know what's in it. It doesn't smell of anything, but it acts kind of like an enamel-based pigment. I love it. Okay, so we have mixed up way too many colors. Small to Derek hooked me up on my last order. You should order from her. You won't be disappointed. Oh, thank you so much. Watching from SC beautiful. How do you pick your colors with hundreds to choose from? So for this piece, the way I picked the colors was I wanted something to accentuate and kind of work with the amber color that's presented as well as some cool colors, some blues to mask some of it as well. So it's not just kind of one tone. Because right now when you look at it, it's much the same. There's darker yellowing or ambering here because it's a thicker pour. I think right here I have, I don't know, a quarter inch deep resin. 
And so I want to kind of work with all of that to change it. Other than that, the way I pick my colors is I pick the main color I'm working with, which if I'm working out of this palette here, I would say like this would be the main, if I chose this as a main color, then I would want something opposite on the color wheel. So that would be something in the pink family. And then I always do either black or a white. And then I always do a metallic. So for this one, I would have the gold. I'm not doing just a painting. I'm doing kind of like a marbled geode on this one. So the colors I chose are a little bit different. But if I was going to do just a regular pour, that's my basic formula. I usually try to keep it to four or five colors. How do you take care of yourself as you always work with resin and strong chemicals? So I'm in a very well ventilated space. Um, my ceilings are 15 feet and this room is 2,600, no, 2,400 square feet. I have windows open. I have air purifiers in the background. I don't know if you can hear them running. And then I have two or three windows open around me to help ventilate. I would be wearing a respirator, except for then you guys wouldn't be able to hear me. At home, definitely uh, take care of your health. It is not um, bright gold. It is rich gold from Color Obsession. Oh, key, doki. I'm happy to continue to answer any questions that you guys have as I go through um, this piece. So keep it coming. How can I fix my top coat that I did when there was too much humidity in the room and it has... An oily looking residue. What grit do I have to sand it before repouring? No name. I would do um, a 220 grit. That's what we typically use. Um, if it's sticky or gummy at all, you may have to kind of scrape it with like a big paint scraper. But it sounds like it's just got a, an oily sheen. It may have blushed because of the humidity. So if it's not sticky, then I would just sand with 220. So right, let's get going. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is mix up a dirty pour. And then I'm going to put the dirty pour down and then we're going to see where we're at from that. With my subtle marble dirty pours, I use a lot of translucence and then just a little swizzles of color so that it's very elegant. So I started with my translucent white, which is kind of like a skim milk type of opacity. Then let's drop in some of our dark storm. Not a lot, just a swizzle. And I think I need to keep my dark storm separate from my warm taupe because I think that if those two colors make a secondary color, it's going to be not very pretty. That was the... Oh, I didn't even tell you what color that was. Spearmint from Just Resin. Put a swizzle of the gold in there. I don't know what it's going to do. It may take over. It may not. We'll find out together. Put some opaque white in there. I think I have made enough separation to put a swizzle of the warm taupe in. The warm taupe is basically a cool version of this tone that I have in the background that has these kind of reds, creams, and um, amber, but it's a cool version of it, even though it says warm taupe. Let's put a little bit more opaque white in there. I never let my, this sit for very long, my dirty pour, because you don't want it to have too much time with itself and then separate and mingle and then make secondary colors. How fun is that already? Let's give it a swirl for interest. And there we have it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this around one or two times, see where we're at and then We'll add our next bunch of lines. I'm 
Oh my goodness. I may just want to do another pour of that because I love it. I'm going to bring you guys down and show you up close what we just created. Sounds like dad's home. Look at that movement. Look at it. Ooh, there's that rich, rich gold coming through right there. I don't care who you are, white gold and that pastel -y, um, spearmint will always look good together. Give me just one second so I can let Bowie down so he can go say hi to dad. Can get down? Okay. He can come say hi to you over here. Okay. Love this. Love every bit of this. Um, I would say try to keep the humidity in your area as ultra minimal as possible. I don't know. Thank you. I don't know what exact percent is recommended. I can ask Mitch. Find out for you. All right. I'm just filling in some of these unusual gaps. And I'm peeking. That area, the rest looks okay. Looks kind of like countertops we did a while back. Hey, Karen, how are you doing? I agree. It does look very much like the countertops we did not too long ago. I th think... I may just do another little dirty pour, just like what we just did. Because I really super love what it looks like. So why not do more of what you like? Sandy works in a basement, so she knows all about trying to work around humidity issues, airflow issues, all sorts of things like that. We do have a little bit of resin left over on the side that I may have to utilize. I always make um, enough resin to have some just waiting on the side for extra things. Thank you, Clara, so much. Oh, my goodness. I haven't used any of my interference oyster yet. I forgot I made it. This is a great color because it's kind of like a warm cream. So if you're going to do white countertops, I always include some of this because should it turn color eventually, possibly, um, it'll be less noticeable because you've already like pre-ambered it in the eyes of the client. You're kind of masking it in advance. That's something I do, especially if my client's um, countertops are in direct sunlight for a lot of the, the time. Okay, so I can't go all the way around. So I'm gonna have to get crafty. I think I'm gonna have to put one of these through the rest of it. Sweet. All right, let's fill this in. Fill this in. This little corner pocket, this little pocket. All 
right. Now that I have this base marble look going on, I'm just gonna roll everything around to fill in. I can do this because I have an edge. If I didn't have an edge, I may not be doing this. Because you don't wanna like invite your resin to run off of your piece. Loose piece of glass. Okay. Not sure I'm feeling this area up here. But you know, sometimes the areas you like the least end up being your favorite bits by the end of it. At least that's the case for me. I'm just going to move that around, blend it out. And now we can do dark accents. And I can worry about what's happening in here. I already have one breach, which is fine. It'll be fine. So I'm going to have a breach right there for sure. And by breach, I mean resin from the outer well is going to get into this inner well, which is fine. It's something we can always fix, at, you know, whenever, at whatever point. So I'm gonna add some dark lines. I just need to figure out where we wanna do it. I think we should come across right there. I like adding dark lines like this because it, it kind of breaks up the kind of consistent tone that's throughout the piece. But I hesitated a little bit, so I have a little bit of squiggle. So I'm just edging that out with a star stick. A lot of people like that scallop look. I do sometimes. Huh? Oh, he's talking to himself. Yeah, he listens to podcasts and he just kind of chats. How can you fix a golden pen line that is one of the finishing touches? Sand it down. You could probably acetone it off, but also you can sand it off. I like this bit, but this is kind of too chunky of a dark. Oh my God. Are you going to be okay? Should I? All right, I'm pretty sure I want gold to be in the center or around the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that before I get crazy and put it around other parts of the piece and forget that I want it to be here. Oh, cannot wait to show you up close of this gold. In fact, I think I need to make more of it. I know I do, so I'm going to go ahead and allocate resin to this cup before I forget. 
And I use so much pigment in my colors that you can just add more resin to it and it's still opaque because I'm a glutton for pigment. Is that too crazy of a name for a resin shop? Um, color glutton? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Probably maybe. Ugh, cannot wait to show you up close of that. And I'm getting way more breaches. And that happens when there's a low spot that is a void. And then there's too much, too much resin on the top. So resin will act just like water. It goes to the lowest point. There's nothing you can do to stop it. And once it like breaches something, you just kind of have to let it live because there's no fixing it at that point. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and add some glass to the center. It's not at all even a little bit going to stop those resin breaches. But it's got to go here anyways. I'm using mirrored glass this time. Whoops. Because I have a lot extra. And why not? I'm also going to mix in some um, Epsom salt. Um, geode into this as well. In my head, I need to do another dark rim on the outside, like maybe this far from the outside edge. But what do you guys think? I need to know. In the meantime, while you guys are answering me that, I'm going to figure out Never mind. We got an answer. Maybe. We'll see. So I don't want to use all my resin to make my Epsom salt mixture. So I'm going to use some old Mod Podge if it's fluid at all. It's a little bit. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So I'm going to use Mod Podge instead of resin. You can use resin, but whoops. I don't like this. There it is. You can use resin. Uh, I'm just low, so I'm going to use Mod Podge. You can use any glue that you have. It'll be fine. I'm using Epsom salt. A lot of resin instructors won't tell you the secret of Epsom salts because they're stingy. And that's fine. That's their prerogative. They can be stingy. But I want to share everything with you guys, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to stir this away from the resin because if it falls into it, it's going to leave a texture a thousand percent. Also, maybe use a bigger cup than I'm using. I'm using the Luster Mod Podge, hoping it'll kind of bring up a little bit of a sheen. I want it to stay on the chunky side. I don't want it to be 
kind of flattened by mixing it. So if you see that your uh, mixture is a little bit too runny, then add more Epsom salt. And if it's too kind of dry and flaky like this, then add more Mod Podge. I haven't done this with Mod Podge before. And I'm hoping that since it's water-based, it isn't going to kind of start breaking down my Epsom salts. But I believe, I have a belief. I think it'll be fine. It's gonna work, it's gonna be fine. I feel like scented Epsom salts should be still fine to use. I don't see, I don't see it giving you any issues. REC, okay, I before E except after C. So it's R E C E I P T. I have no shame of still using those little um, grade school methods. I also still count uh, what month it is on my fingers. Oh yeah, that's very true, Clara. So I want to just add this around. Dang it. All right, it's fine, it's fine. I'm kind of trying to Um, what's this called when you do this move? Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle's good. I'm trying to sprinkle this on so that it doesn't end up flat like this. Cause it's, it's like playing with wet sand at this point. And if you mush it, it's just not gonna look as nice and kind of what I'm going for as if you sprinkle it on. And I know a lot of you are probably looking at this like, what the F is she doing? But you know what? Sometimes you gotta just trust the process. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I teach a lot of classes using this Epsom salt mixture and I think it looks super realistic once it's finished. But before it's finished, when you're in this stage, where it just looks like you, you accidentally spilled a tub of feta cheese on Yeah, when it just looks like you spilled feta cheese on your painting, it's not the best look. But it's going to be the best look. I'm going to get extra experimental with this because typically resin does not like um, water. And... I'm going to, I think I need to mix it up a little bit more. Dang it. Typically resin doesn't like water and Mod Podge is definitely water-based. But I have to put resin on this or else it's not going to bond to the base of the piece. Um, I typically put glitter and sand into my Epsom salt, but I am out of my translucent glitter that I typically use. And the last time I put sand in it, the sand wasn't as white as my everything else, my Epsom salt. So it just didn't 
just didn't look right. I'm going to have to get some more Mod Podge into this mix. But yeah, you can use white glitter and white sand. I would recommend using bleached sand or even better, use um, synthetic sand because real sand will still turn kind of a gray color when you wet it. It's just the nature of sand. Thank you, Smalls. Have an awesome day. I was hoping I could level up this piece within one live feed. I think I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, I mean, you can... It still looks neat to have real sand in your resin pieces. It just, it's just not my favorite when you're using real sand because no matter what color it is, it's gonna turn kind of a weird gray color. So that's what I do to avoid it. I use synthetic sand and a plastic fine sand, you know, because those reasons. Did you guys say whether I should add another dark line on this or no? I still want some of the glass to show through. And I want levels. So I want some high points, some low spots. I'm gonna have to put some glass in the middle middle. Kind of cleared it out a little too well. I'm trying to be real careful going up on these edges so I don't put, splash too much of my Epsom salt mixture into the actual resin piece. My goodness, my hands are so sweaty and it's near impossible to put a glove on the sweaty hands. Have you guys ever had that issue? There's a pro tip about that. Just put two gloves on and then when you take one glove off, the under glove will be perfect in theory. I always end up accidentally taking all the gloves off. All right, so I'm trying to just mix in, hide in. some glass here. I had to hollow it out earlier so that I could mix stuff in front of y'all. Cool. It's the winter wonderland. Dark room, dark room, dark room. Cool, okay. Oh my goodness, I forgot about these little I'm just gonna use some of that. We don't have to make a whole new mixture. Clara, we're usually on the same page, I feel like. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. That 
that's what we're going to do. I think I need to add, I think I need to add a white, maybe not. I know for sure I'm going to add more gold, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And can y'all hear him? Now, if I was going to do this on a table, I would have left it many steps ago. I would not have added any of the darker lines. But since this is wall art and not supposed to be just marble, we're finishing it out with the design lines. Love the gold, so I'm adding it in these areas. It's okay if it kind of gets on your glass. It's fully okay. And right now, because I'm kind of laying the gold down loosely, you'll see some kind of lines or textures just from my application, but that'll smooth out. How much did I mix up? This was 16 ounces. So I'm going to take some of the clear that I made. I'm going to pre-drizzle it on these little corner bits, mainly for the Epsom salt mixture that we put on. This will just bind it to everything else that we have on. I'm doing the same in the middle. And I'm hoping that the fact that I used a water-based glue for my mod, I mean, for my Epsom salt, won't really interfere or react too much with the resin. I'm sprinkling, drizzling over the top of it, but you never know. We'll find out together. Could you add construction foam border once hardened? You could. Um, I'll probably do either Bondo or modeling paste uh, rim on the edge to give it kind of that rocky texture, but you can use construction foam for sure. Sweet. I did get some of my Epsom salt mixture dropped into the, this, but it'll be fine. Okay, next, whoop, next is, well, I want you guys to see is that light on, yep. Yeah. How pretty is that gold? And then when you heat it, it turns even more beautiful because the particles will decide if they want to sink or float. But in the meantime, it gives that like interesting looking spine in the middle from some particles sinking and some particles floating. And I think that's just an awesome little extra texture. By heating the resin, I'm thinning it and allowing some particles to sink and some particles to float.
Right. Now it's time for glitter glass. I'm not doing the rim in this episode. I will do that in post-production. If you guys want to see a video of how I do that, leave me a comment. So this is glitter glass. It's quite actually literally super fine, tea tiny slivers of glass. And I love it because it's clear and they lay in all sorts of different directions. So it gives the impression of sparkle glitter without it being like, oh, glitter. <laughs> Sorry. He's not laughing at me. Sorry about that. I keep getting calls. You think people know I'm alive right now. Um, wait till you see the difference this glitter glass makes. Even when you have mirrored glass like we have right now, this just adds just the next level sparkle and pizzazz like an actual geode would have. I would never do a geode without having glitter glass. Never. Um, if you do use glitter glass, it has to be the last thing that you put on because it has to be on the top. If you let it sink or if you put another layer of resin over it, you unfortunately will just not see it anymore. It will sink and disappear. Since we have this little blurb of texture right here, I'm gonna add some glitter glass so that it looks like a choice. I could pull it out, but since it's in the middle of this line of gold, I'm gonna leave it because I wouldn't really be able to fix it. Cleanly if I were to pull that, that part out. All right, now Let's see it this time. Let me turn the light on. Ding, 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 ding. Paula, I prefer the clear because you can put it over pretty much any color and it will adopt that. I have it in other colors. For example, here's a gold, but it's it, there is a solvent on them. And so depending on what you put with it, the color that's on this glass could very much, Clara, it could come off. So I prefer the clear because I know what it's gonna do. Thank you, Craig. I'm super fan of blues, whites, and golds together. And yeah, that, that little bit is kind of a mistake, but I find beauty in the unperfect. And I think that that's just a little something extra and all this extra little blurb blurbs. Oh, no worries, Connie. I'm happy to see you here. So, yeah, I think that is a great improvement from the first version. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments. You can find all of what I use here, except for the Epsom salts. You can get that on Amazon. Use my link down below doink, doink, doink. to get to Amazon. It really helps our channel when you buy through our link. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps support our channel. As Clara said, the colors I used were Color Obsession Warm Taupe, just, nope, uh, Color Obsession Rich Gold Shimmer, Color Passion Dark and Stormy, Just Resin Spearmint, just Resin Titanium, 
color passion top cell white abalone and that's it um, please join our facebook group atd's poor people where we talk art all the time super supportive inspiring people in that group i love it love it love it i'm so down for these colors together but i want to know what you guys think look forward to hearing from you guys um so yeah be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember that we do the tests so you don't have to. And now I will show you my puppies. Right, Vamp? That is very true. Most colors ever. I usually stick to four at tops of five. This is my baby boy. He's very tweepy, but he's feeling better. Thank you to everyone for the well wishes on his allergies. He feeling better, my boy. It's nap time, so he's not, not into it. There's the big girl. Hogan Bowie Span. Anyways, you guys are amazing, and that's my shop. I hope you have an awesome day. Be kind to one another, because you never know what someone's going through, and I always remember to do, um, that we do a test, so you don't have to, but I already said that. So um, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central for another amazing live. You guys are amazing, and we'll see you next time. Bye. I said bye. You said bye. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for getting a girl, 120. I also did a five.